Hello, welcome. In this video, we're looking at trigonometry, specifically the unit circle definition of sine, cosine, and tangent. And we're going to work on problems in the practice set here, which is called trig values of special angles. So let's let's look at that. Um, we'll do f we'll do four examples together, and for this problem set. Uh, you'll see problems like this and they all come down to the idea that you're going to be dealing with some type of special triangle so uh, for example um, you might be dealing with some version of a 45 45 90 so 45 45 90 triangle or in radians you might see that as a pi over 4 pi over 4, nine, and then instead of 90, pi over 2. Remember that pi is the same as 180 degrees, so that's how we get these measurements here. And if you're thinking in terms of a unit circle, uh, you would say that the hypotenuse is then 1, and each of the side lengths would be the square root of 2 over 2, and that's something we can figure out and prove by using the Pythagorean theorem. I encourage you to try it. We've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this case, the two side lengths a and b are equal. It's an isosceles triangle. So you're really dealing with two a squares. And that should equal c squared. And if you simplify this out and, and solve, if c is 1, for example, you can prove that a has to equal the square root of 2 over 2 when c is 1. And in general, uh, if you solve this generally, I guess we should just do it. Divide by 2, take the square root of both sides, and you get the square root of 2 over 2 times c. So whatever c equals, right, these side lengths right here will be the square root of 2 over 2 times c. Okay, so that's a relationship here that you're going to be using a lot. Another relationship here is not a 45, 45, 90, but a 30, 60, 90. So something maybe more like see if I can manipulate the shape a little bit so maybe instead of a, a 90 there we go okay so instead of 45 up here we got 30 let's say so let's say okay this is 30 degrees up here 30 degrees and or which is the same as pi over 6 radians and let's say this one right here which is 90 is therefore 60 degrees which is pi over 3 radians. And if we then say that our hypotenuse is 1, we can say the side length across my hypotenuse is one, one half of that length. So whatever this is, this is a half of that. But I'll, I'll just call it 1 because we are referring to the unit circle in this section in Khan Academy. And then this, we can figure out or prove using the Pythagorean theorem, is the square root of 3 over 2. So the 30, 60, 90 triangle is referring to this from some perspective. I say some perspective because we could deal with angles in any of the four quadrants. You can see that in a moment. Or the 45, 45, 90 in some, from some perspective. So what are we dealing with, let's say, in this one, the first one, 4 pi over 3? Well, what what's really nice about dealing with angles on a coordinate plane is that you get, you get used to this idea that 180 degrees is pi radians, 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians, 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2, and then a full rotation is all the way to 2 pi radians. So when I see 4 pi over 3, I'm thinking this is in thirds, so I'm thinking that 4 pi over 3 is 4 thirds, or 1 and 1 third pi. I think of that because one pi would bring me here, and an extra third brings me just beyond that here. Right, so this little chunk right here is pi over three radians, or 60 degrees, and this chunk right here is pi radians, which is 180. So now I can draw a triangle in this direction, and this is the right triangle we will examine. I'm gonna call the hypotenuse one, this is our, our hypotenuse. And I just label this as pi over 3 radians. So this is this angle right here is pi over 3, which
which is 60 degrees, which means that this angle right here, of course, the triangle is 180 degrees, 180 minus 90 minus 60 is 30. So this is pi over 6, or 30 degrees. And that helps us because if this length is 1, that means that the side length across from the 30 degree angle is a half, and that this length is radical 3 over 2. And now, to, to answer this question, what we have to accept is that uh, from the perspective on a, of a coordinate plane, we define um, on a unit circle. Let me get this unit circle in there now. Let me go back a slide here. Oops. Here, let's go over some generalization here. And I'll go back to that image. The idea of the unit circle is that we, on a Cartesian, Cartesian plane, we can draw a circle with a radius of 1. Here's my unit circle. And then we draw, if we draw a triangle right here, I should flip that around. Let me flip this Oop, left and right. Okay. And let me resize it. Should do it. All right. The idea is that this triangle right here, center of the origin, the hypotenuse, is the radius of the unit circle. And the radius of the unit circle is 1, so the hypotenuse is 1, right? Okay, let me just draw that straight line, sorry. Okay, so this is our hypotenuse, and it hits the unit circle here. So if that's the case, there's, this is some point x, y. Here we drop this line down as a perpendicular, so we've got a right triangle. And what we're interested in is this angle here, which is called theta. So with our, our trig definitions, the sine of theta, this is where things get interesting, is opposite, whatever this length is, over the hypotenuse. So it's this vertical length over hypotenuse. And that vertical length is just y, because it's the distance from the x-axis up to the point. That's the y value. So the sine of theta is y over 1, or just y, which means that any point that's intersecting the unit circle, we say the sine of theta does equal that y value. These are the same thing. So whatever the y value is at that point, that's the sine. And then similarly, the cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the x value. So this distance right here, the distance from the origin to the, um, the left or right location of the point is the x value over the hypotenuse 1, and that's x. So, we, so cosine of theta is defined as the x value of that point. And then we go to our problem right here. That's extended here because now we have our unit circle, right? This is our unit circle in this case, right? There's a hypotenuse of one and it's hitting the unit circle right here. So whatever the X and Y value of that point is, are, that's the cosine and sine of that angle. The X value is going back one half. And I said back one half, so it's negative one half. That negative, you can't have a negative length, but that's negative is indicating direction. And that's our cosine, negative one half. And the sine is going down negative radical three over two. So that indicates the sine value because we are saying the sine is the y value of that point and the cosine is the x value of that point. And that's how all these problems tend to work. Let's look at another one here. So now I have cosine of seven pi over four. So it's not that I'm sketching it out each time. I don't, I don't really need to do that. Once you get used to it, you'll get past that point. But you set this up. And let's make our circle blue. Okay. Oh, no, I keep doing that. I give it fill, but I don't want to do that. So here we have, we've got a unit circle. Okay. And 7 pi over 4. Well, I know that 8 pi over 4 Think about this for a second. 8 pi over 4. That is equal to 7 pi over 4 plus pi over 4. Okay. I also know that if I rearrange this a little bit, I can also say that 8 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 7 pi over 4. Now, why am I doing that? It's because of my landmarks. This is pi over 2. 180 degrees is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. So I'm always thinking about my landmarks here. 
and this is 2 pi. 2 pi is 8 pi over 4. Same thing, right? 8 divided by 4 is 2. So this is a fourth of pi less than a full rotation. That's what 7 pi over 4 is. So this is 45 degrees back from a full rotation. That's me trying to draw a pi over 4 or 45 degrees. Here's my perpendicular. Not the best at all, but I'll, you know what? I can do better than that. So let me grab my triangle tool. I'm going to draw the triangle in this region here and then turn it around. Okay, so, so pi over 4, by the way, that's 45 degrees, right? So I'm going to turn it and then I'm going to flip it. Boom. Oops, I think I had it right an orientation here. This, this is the right orientation. And I want to make it a little bit larger. I want to give you a better sense of what's going on here. This is So pi over 4 is 45 degrees. I'm trying to create a triangle that fits nicely there. And it's hard to draw freehand because I'm outside right now. Okay. What did I just do? I just drew a triangle. Still a little sloppy, but this is pi over 4 radians. And so is this, because this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And that means the hypotenuse is 1, and these lengths are the square root of 2 over 2. This one up and down, you know, let's say that going down, it's negative square root of 2 over 2. And this, the cosine, is going up in the positive direction, which is the square root of 2 over 2. And that gives us our answers here. So just keep, keep watch of that when you have a negative sign, right? And the next one, we have 150 and 150. So now we're back in degrees. So that might be easier for you to think about. Okay, so the idea is that uh, you don't need to draw the unit circle here, but that's the approach being emphasized, so I'll just I'll use that. Here, 150 degrees, that's 30 degrees before 180. So if if I have this right here representing 30 degrees before 180, I can draw this triangle. To represent what's going on and here this is my 60 degree angle this is my 30 degree angle hypotenuse is one the side across from 30 is one half of that length and this is radical 3 over 2 and I'm putting a negative now because we're going back radical 3 over 2 and that's the location of this point this point is back from the origin negative radical 3 over 2 and then up one half so the cosine is negative radical 3 over 2 and the sine is one half. Okay, last one. I forgot to copy and paste this one from the site, so let me cross this out. It's not 150. In this case, it's 135. 135 degrees. So now, think about that one. Maybe take a moment, give it a shot. We draw this out. And here, um, we've got an angle 45 degrees from 180, right? Because 180 minus 45 is 135 degrees. So the angle is kind of like here. And then I get my unit circle going. Okay. That's the model they're emphasizing. So I'll emphasize it. And then I have this point of intersection. I drop my perpendicular. Here's my right angle. So this is a 45 degree angle here. This is a 45 degree angle here. And again, all I just did was I thought, well, this is 135 degrees. We always start at the x-axis. We always start there. That's 135 degrees. That's this measurement. This is 45 degrees left over here. That makes 180. So it's my reference point is 180. And then I can fill out all of my blanks in. My hypotenuse is 1, and the side lengths are uh, square of 2 over 2. But since I'm including direction, I want to indicate that the cosine is negative. That's the x direction, and the sine is positive, which brings me to this point right here, negative square root of 2 over 2, and the square root of 2 over 2. So cosine is negative square root of 2 over 2, and sine is positive square root of 2 over 2. Okay, I hope this helped.